Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So in this video, I wanted to get back to the camping theme that I did earlier in the summer and specifically talk about two different types of stoves that are primarily the main types of stoves you're going to find for backpacking, camping, moto camping type stuff. So that is the uh, canister stove and then the multi-fuel stove. Now I'm not going to necessarily endorse one over the other, but over the last couple of months I've been using both of them depending on the type of travel I've been doing. And from those experiences I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing my thoughts on the canister stove and the multi-fuel stove. So if you're looking for a new stove or wanting to replace what you have, I could share my experiences and why I would choose one over the other depending on the type of motorcycle travel that I was doing. So stick around and we'll talk about these stoves, pluses, minuses, and why you may choose one over the other. Okay, the first style of stove that I'm gonna talk about is the canister stove, which uh, these just screw on, if I can get it off, to the top of these uh, canisters that you can pick up at most camping stores. Uh, they come, the canisters come in three sizes. This is an eight ounce, there's a four ounce, and then there's also a 16 that's super tall. Now, um, the nice thing about these is they're convenient. They're easy, you pick it up, grab it, go. Uh, it's easy to put a stove on there, so it makes it clean. And uh, let me get this screw back on. These stoves are, um, can be relatively inexpensive. I think I've seen uh, canister stoves for as little as uh, 10 or $15, and then of course you can spend uh, into the hundreds of dollars. Uh, Jet boil is a very popular type of stove that is a canister stove and it's a whole kit that comes together and I think those are around a hundred or so dollars. Um, but I have this particular stove on here which is a Snow Peak I've had for 20 years. I've uh, never had a problem with it. It started every time. The, po the positives on this are it's uh, easy to use. You just screw it on to the canister. They are fairly clean. You're not going to have to worry about getting any type of fuel on you um, like you do with the other stoves. They, uh, these canisters can be fairly uh, inexpensive. I think this one costs like $9. The smaller ones are about $5. And they're, they're quite convenient. Um, for this, I take this canister and I can put it in my pots and then it just nests in there. So, I'll show you that. Take this back off. So, from a convenience and packing standpoint, it can be quite easy. So, canister goes in my pot, and then I know it's in there. And then I did a video where I actually put um, my small, this is the case for the stove. I'll put it in my uh, Stanley Boil pot, and it nests in there. So, from a packing standpoint, it can be really nice. All right, so I talked about the positives of these stoves. Now I wanna talk about the negative aspects of these stoves. If you're gonna do a lot of motorcycle camping, I end up having to buy a lot of these tanks. And if I don't wanna take a partial tank and a full one, I end up taking a full one. So that means I end up having a lot of partial uh, fuel canisters sitting around because I've got limited packing space on the bike. I don't wanna carry multiples of these. I've done it in the past, it's a pain. Um, the other thing is one of these canisters in the way that I cook, which is uh, something in the evening and something in the morning, I usually uh, grab lunch on the road. I will go through one of these canisters in about a week, um, six to seven days. So trips that are any longer than that, I'm either stopping to have to buy another canister or I'm having to carry multiple with me. If it if it's just quick trips, these are nice, they're convenient, but longer trips, uh, I've ran out of gas a number of times in places where it's not easy to find uh, replacement canisters. So that's one of the negatives. One of the other things that I found more recently is I had uh, gone camping where the temperatures got down in the 30s, and I've, I've had this experience before. I try not to camp when it's that cold, but because there's liquid gas in here under pressure, um, it actually vaporizes and then comes out. So there's a, a, a gassing off effect and that can be dependent on temperature. So what I found is in temperatures around 34 degrees and lower, there's not a lot of pressure coming out of this canister. So yeah, my stove will start and it'll burn, but it's not burning very hot and you don't get a lot of flame. And it took 
Uh, I think I had my boil pot on here for over 10 minutes and it wasn't boiling. I just, I got irritated and frustrated, so I just shut it off. And I had experienced that in the past as well. Um, so cold weather performance isn't as good uh, with these stoves. In cold temperatures, uh, it can be a problem. So something to think about if you do a lot of cold motorcycle camping, which I don't know why you would do that. It's miserable, I do it too much. So yeah, those are the positives and negatives of these stoves. If you're thinking about one of these, those are some things to take into consideration. Now keep in mind, I'm not an expert on camping stoves. I'm talking uh, from my own experience and from my own opinions based on my own experience. Your experience may be different with these stoves and if that's the case, great. Leave your comments below so others can see what your thoughts are on the different types of stoves. So, all right, I'm done with this. Let's move on to a multi-fuel stove. Great. I'm going to be just generically talking about multi-fuel stoves. I'm not going to be advocating for any one or the other. My experience has been on the MSR Whisper Lite, uh, which I picked up a couple years ago and more recently started using it more frequently because I like uh, some features of this stove. So to start with, it uh, I use white fuel or uh, Coleman fuel. It burns pretty clean. and the nice thing about this is before every trip, I can fill this tank up and I know that I have a fuel tank, a full tank every time I go. It, I don't have to guess what's in a canister. I know that this is full and it's ready to go. The last trip I took, uh, I think I, I could have gotten about seven or eight days on a full tank of, of uh, white fuel and that's doing the same type of cooking. Now you can get multiple size bottles, which, which makes it easy. This is a 20 ounce bottle. I also have a 32. A 32 ounce bottle would likely last me close to two weeks. So if I'm gonna be gone and I'm gonna be in, back, in the back country areas where buying a canister is not really practical, then I know I've got plenty of fuel. The other thing is these can be converted to run off of other types of fuels like uh, gasoline. Looking at the MSR website, uh, they had some tips on on doing that. I haven't converted this yet, so I haven't. I don't have any experience running it on gasoline. But many of the world travelers, this typically tends to be what they use because it's the same fuel that goes in their bike. The MSR website, when I was looking at it, they recommended not using premium unleaded because premium unleaded has a lot of additives in it, and the stove doesn't necessarily like all those additives. It just recommended using base unleaded fuel. So if you're going by gas stations, you can just top off your tank whenever you go through. If you're desperate, you can siphon it out of your tank and use it. I do know that those fuels, uh, according to what MSR had said, is they burn a little bit more dirty, so you have the chance of, of plugging them up. But those are some of the, the positives of using a multi-fuel stove. One other thing is with, the, with this stove, I took it on a trip where I was camping where temperatures were in the 30s and I never had any issue with this. It, um, you just repressurize the bottle uh, when it's cold and you get enough fuel out, it lit up just fine, and I had great temperatures, great pressure, so the cold weather performance of this um, outperformed what I would get out of a canister stove, so that's another positive for this. But if you're not camping in the cold, maybe that's not a big deal, and I really shouldn't be camping in the cold like I have been because it's not that much fun. All right, some of the negatives of these type of multi-fuel stoves is they periodically need cleaning uh, because of the fuel and some of the soot that you can see like this one has a lot of black on it from soot when it first starts up. And the other thing is every time you take this lid off, or at least every time I take this lid off or the um, valve off, it always spews a little. So I usually keep uh, an old sock and wrap it around. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not. No, and of course it didn't do it that time, but it usually does, especially when it's under pressure. Uh, there's a little bit of gas that kind of spews out, so I always use something to wrap around it so I don't get it on my hands. So the other thing is, the first time I used one of these, I didn't know how to use it and didn't realize that the fuel was going to be coming out uh, in its liquid form until it goes through the heat exchanger where it vaporizes it. And I left the valve open and I had gas everywhere, flames everywhere. So there is a technique to starting these. Uh, I'm sure everyone has a little bit different technique, but what I do is I start it, I open the valve until I see the wick down here get wet, and then I'll turn the valve off. I'll light the wick, 
and then I'll turn the valve on again just until the flame gets going a little bit and then I can watch and see as the fuel begins to vaporize and then turn into a gas and comes out the jet uh, into the burner. Uh, I think I have some video of here. The, the flames will get up to about this high when you're getting it started if you put a little bit too much gas. So there's a little bit of a, a learning curve on starting this over, over the other ones. All right, just some final thoughts on things you may want to consider before deciding which stove that you want to go with. If, uh, if you're doing short trips, two, three night trips, uh, this might be a really convenient option for you. Uh, I know a lot of people do traveling all over the country and are out for extended periods of time with these, uh, but they're going to have to find canisters pretty regularly, so that can take some extra effort. If you're only going camping a handful of nights a year, uh, this is probably a really good option too because these aren't that expensive and then the stoves to go with it are small, compact, and ten, you can get some fairly inexpensive ones. Um, my experience and for what I'm going to be doing going forward, if I know I'm going to be going out for uh, a week or more, I'm likely going to take the white fuel. I can get the, the bigger tank. So this is um, my choice and I'm not going to convert it to an unleaded uh, stove just yet. When I know I'm going to be doing longer trips, I will do that because of the convenience of being able to get gas at every station uh, to run the stove is really, really convenient. And uh, I was uh, put in my place at uh, Overland Expo and I was asking some uh, international travelers why they didn't use a canister stove. And the first thing that they said is uh, most places outside of the U.S., maybe in Canada, you can't find these. So you have to use a, a multi-fuel stove where you can kick gas and, and put it in. So those are some considerations before getting one stove over the other or if you're trying to figure out which one you would prefer. There's a lot of different models, a lot of different brands on both of these. So I'm not advocating one over uh, the other, one brand or one model over the other. I think uh, the benefits of this stove, of always knowing I have a, a full full a full fuel tank and that it'll operate in colder temperatures is uh, worth it to me for longer trips. If I'm just doing an overnighter and I know it's not going to be that cold, um, I'll likely just take this because it's a little bit easier to pack and a little bit more convenient. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this informative. And again, this is based on my experience using these stoves. Your experience may be different and that's great. Leave your experience down below on the comments on uh, which stove that you would prefer and the type of uh, motorcycle traveling you do and why you choose one over the other. And um, get out, do some camping. Weather is still great right now. It is fall. Uh, is one of my, this is my absolute favorite month of the year, favorite time of the year. So I uh, hope this inspires you to get out and do some motorcycle camping and I will see you out there. Don't get in my plate. Just, yeah, you stay over there. You can have the crumbs out of that. I'm done. I'm not cooking out of that anymore. And uh, just leave my pancakes in my plate alone. Yeah, you are cheeky.